Hey everyone, Leonard Kinsey here. Um, I've been getting some people asking me how I pack for five weeks in Europe. How, how the hell does someone pack for five weeks in Europe? Um, and I'm still trying to figure it out, actually. I did some things right, I did some things wrong. Um, but I think the bottom line maybe is that you can't actually pack for five weeks anywhere. You just kind of pack for a week, basically. Um, but let me show you some of the stuff that I did pack and some of the stuff that I did right and some of the stuff I did wrong. <laughs> okay, this is my suitcase. This is a Swiss gear suitcase. It's got wheels on the bottom and um, it's pretty sturdy and I've actually got a bigger one uh, the same type, just bigger, which I'm glad I didn't bring because I packed this full of stuff and it was pretty heavy and I bet you anything if I had brought the bigger one I would have packed that full of stuff and it would have been even heavier. As it was, this thing was a real pain in the ass dragging around everywhere, especially up and down steps and onto trains and off of trains and I probably should have actually gotten something smaller. So pack as small as you can and pack as light as you can and you will thank yourself later. So I also got a toiletries kit, and it's waterproof. Each of the little sections is waterproof. So if something leaks, it won't leak on everything else, and it won't leak on all your clothes. And it's got a hook on the top, and this is important because, turns out, bathrooms in Europe are really small, and counter space is at a premium in a bathroom there. So you can use this to hang it on the shower rod or anywhere else, and that frees up some counter space, which is really nice. So I've got tied sink packets. You basically stop up a sink, dump this into it, fill up the sink with hot water, and then wash your clothes in the sink. And when you're done washing them, you've got a laundry line, hooks on each end. So you hook it on someplace, hook it on someplace else. It's fully adjustable and stretchy. And then you just hang your laundry on this. I'd say I did my laundry maybe four times when I was in Europe. I kept running out of socks. Uh, I don't know why that was. That's the thing I apparently did not pack enough of. So pack more socks than you expect. This is also great for laundry. This is Downy Wrinkle Releaser. So your clothes are going to get wrinkled in the suitcase. And this helps a lot so you don't have to break out the ironing board. Actually a lot of the hotels and stuff don't have ironing boards or irons. And uh, it's also nice if you have to clean your clothes in the sink and then air dry them. This will make them nice and soft afterwards. And also makes everything smell better. So if you do want to wear the same pair of jeans for five weeks every day without ever washing them, you could probably spray this on them every day and you'd, you'd be okay. You wouldn't stink too bad. But don't do that because that's really disgusting. Speaking of clothes, here's some of the stuff I brought with me. These are ex officio underwear. Uh, you can see it's kind of a weird fabric. It's definitely not normal cotton. The great thing about these is that they dry really quick, like in like an hour sometimes. So technically you could just get two pairs of underwear and wash one and wear the other one and that's all the underwear you would need for your entire trip. Now, I didn't do that. I brought extra underwear because I didn't feel like washing underwear every night. But you could technically do that. These are great. Given that I was going to Iceland and then Munich and then Switzerland and then France and Amsterdam, I knew the weather was going to be all over the place. And it's not like I could pack a jacket for every occasion. So what I did is I packed layers. Like, for example, a flannel and a t-shirt. That's for when it's, like, kind of cold. Uh, so that's two layers right there. So when it gets colder, I had a fleece. Just a nice light fleece. This is a Columbia fleece and um, it's got this weird lining that's like space age and I guess it's what campers use in sleeping bags. It just kind of reflects your body heat back inward more um, which makes it warmer. So it turns out that when it's really cold and really windy the wind just goes straight through the fleece, straight through the flannel, straight through the t-shirt and it chills you to the bone. Um, and the only way to stop that is to buy a windbreaker. This is by Marmot. It's a windbreaker slash raincoat, so it's totally waterproof too. 
This stops that wind, and this is what's going to keep you warm. This is your outer shell. You're going to wear this over the fleece, over everything else. And um, this was perfect in Iceland when, when I was up on the glacier, for example. But, you know, of course, in five weeks, it's going to rain occasionally, and this kept me dry. Not only that, but it folds up into its own pocket and ends up being about that big. So I would just throw that into my messenger bag every day and bring it just in case of rain. And that leads me to my man purse. It's a man purse. You can call it whatever you want, messenger bag, a carrier bag, but, uh, but it is a man purse and a lovely one at that. Um, this is from Everest. It's made out of canvas. I think it costs like $15. This was invaluable. So, you know, I carried a lot of stuff with me every day. Video camera, of course. Um, the rain jacket, like I said. Usually something to eat, usually something to drink. Uh, my charger, my phone, that's not, I can't carry that in my hands, it's not all going to fit in my pockets. I didn't want to bring a backpack because I'm always kind of like freaked out about people pickpocketing something on my back because I can't see what they're doing and I can't feel it. With this, you just wear it slung over your front, put your arm on it, everything's secure. I actually put my passport in here every day. I know like Rick Steves says to get a money belt or something that you wear on your neck for your passport, but it was just fine in here. So this thing it seemed waterproof. It got rained on a lot, and none of the stuff inside ever got wet. Lots of pockets. Pockets for your phone, pockets for other stuff, and yeah. I carried this with me every day of the trip, and it was invaluable, and you gotta get one of these if you're a guy. If you're a girl, you've probably got a purse that you can use. But, uh, you know, I think it looks kinda cool. I think it may made me look like Indiana Jones, maybe. <laughs> or not. Next up, shoes. So these are Skechers. They have uh, memory foam insole. They're very comfortable, made out of canvas, very light. So what I was told was that no one in Europe wears tennis shoes all the time. And if you wear tennis shoes all the time, you're going to look like a tourist. And I didn't want to look like a tourist. So I got these. These are the comfort of tennis shoes, but uh, they look kind of dressier. They look nicer. Um, turns out that's a load of shit. Everyone in Europe wears tennis shoes all the time. Obviously not in the nice restaurants. But either way, these are nice shoes to have. And what I did was I waterproofed these because I knew it was going to rain at least a few days during my trip. And so I got this Kiwi silicone waterproofing spray and did a few coats of this on them. It didn't really work at all. I'm not sure why. I don't know. Maybe the silicone and the canvas don't get along or something. Um, so that didn't work. It worked on some other stuff that I waterproofed. So what I did was I bought some beeswax and actually rubbed the sticks of beeswax all over the fabric of the shoes and then used a hairdryer to melt it into the fabric. And that actually worked. That actually waterproofed the shoes. So obviously you know that you've got to bring your prescription medications with you and your multivitamins and all that kind of crap. But what I'm telling you, and this is a hot tip, is bring every type of medicine that you might conceivably need over the course of the trip. So that's antacids, that's headache medicine. I don't even know if they sell ibuprofen over in Europe. I never saw it. That's cold medicine. And then I found this out the hard way because I actually got a cold in Bruges. I figured, oh, I'll just go to the grocery store and, and buy some cold medicine. Nope. I mean, they had cold medicine, but it was like all natural crap, and that's not going to do anything. So you actually have to go to a pharmacy that's manned by a doctor and get the cold medicine there. Um, and all the cold medicine they had was really weird. I ended up getting this stuff. I have no idea what it is. We don't have this in the US. I took two of these as directed and within 10 minutes was like laid out flat on the floor, passed out. Uh, which is probably great as a recreational drug, but when you actually want to sightsee and you know, get out of your apartment and go see the town, not so good. So I would have really been happy having my good old American cold medicine with me that actually gets rid of my symptoms instead of just knocking me flat on my ass. Um, if anyone wants some of this, uh, just leave your address in the comments below. <laughs> so this is cool. This is a flask. It's like paper thin and it folds up, you know, real thin. And what you do is you fill it up with a funnel, just like a regular flask, and it expands a lot. 
pretty cool. So I would fill this up with booze and take it on hikes with me and uh, bring it into the theme parks. I think they sell these for people to bring booze into cruises, but anyway, I mean, it's nice just not having to carry a big, thick, heavy flask with you when these are light and fold up and will fit easily into your luggage. Okay, now on to some technology stuff. So I got this power converter slash power strip, and on the one end, it's got the European plug, and then on the actual strip, it's got American plugs. So it's like they combined a converter with a power strip. And it's nice and small. And it's also got USB jacks. So you can charge your phones too. And I use this every day to charge my laptop and my phone and my camera. And yeah, definitely pick one of these up. Another power thing that's great, this is like a power brick. It's by Anchor or Anker. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Anyway, you charge this up overnight, it takes like 12 hours, and then I would just toss this into my bag every day, and if my phone ran out of battery or my Kindle or whatever, and I'm on a train or I'm hiking and I don't have access to a power plug, you can just plug it into here with this little USB plug, any kind of USB plug, and it charges up your device. And I think you can get like six or seven charges from one full charge of this, uh, so then you never have to worry about your phone dying, which, especially if you're using your phone for GPS, that's kind of a big deal in a foreign country. So definitely get one of these and just bring it with you wherever you go. Okay, so I also picked up some extra SD cards, flash cards for my camera, and brought those with me everywhere I went, just because you never know. I mean, you might think you have enough space on your one card, but then you find something really cool and you just keep filming and you're almost out of space. You just pop another one of these in and, and you keep going. And then every night, I would come back and back up the SD cards to this portable USB hard drive. And that way I would have my footage in two different places in case something happened to one of them because I'm really paranoid. Um, but it's also nice because then if you do run out of space on a card, you can just offload all that footage onto the portable drive and then wipe the card and start over again. And last but not least, my trusty Swiss Army knife. Uh, I bring this thing with me wherever I go, whenever I travel. It's got screwdriver, bottle opener, can opener, knife, scissors, uh, toothpick, tweezers. Uh, this. I don't leave home without this thing. Obviously you can't take it on the plane, but I put it in my suitcase and I take it wherever I go. So if you don't have one of these yet, don't wait till you get to Switzerland to buy one. Get one here and bring it with you. That's about all I've got. So um, I did a lot of research for this trip and there's a lot of trial and error. There's some things I didn't do like packing cubes or those vacuum bags for clothes that like save a lot of space in your suitcase. They didn't seem very intuitive to me, like they didn't seem like something I'd use often, but maybe you've done that and maybe you love them. And if so, uh, I would love for you to leave a comment and tell me all about it. And if you have any questions about what I packed or anything about my trips, um, just leave a comment below too. And please subscribe and that way you'll get notified as I release more videos in this series because I've probably got like 20 left. I mean, it was a long trip. So anyway, all right, Leonard Kinsey out. Cheers.